All right, hello and welcome to another online inside interview, expert interview with Chip Bell, who is in Georgia today. How are you doing, Chip? I'm awesome, John, and delighted to be with you. Excellent. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeline and CRM. And Chip has helped many Fortune 100 companies uh, basically enhance their bottom lines, you know, increase their reputations in the marketplace. And he has written how many books now, Chip? It's, uh... Uh, more than I've read. Um... <laughs> Uh, uh, 23. 23 books. Okay, so yeah. I thought we'd start at number one and just go through each one. No, actually, I thought, <laughs> what, <laughs> thought what we'd do today is we talk about your latest book, Kaleidoscope, okay. uh, Delivering sure. Innovative Service That Sparkles. Now, that sounds, I mean, that's a great title, and I love the cover of the Thanks. book. But what do you mean by service that sparkles? Oh, great. It's about very unique. Um, and let me take a second and describe a difference. Most organizations know they're supposed to exceed the customer's expectations. That's sort mm -hmm. of a given. Right. Um, the way many organizations at attack it is what they would label value added. Value added is basically taking what the customer expects and adding more. For example, you're a hotel. It might be you're a frequent guest of ours. Let's put you on the fancy floor, on the concierge level. Right. Or you're a frequent flyer of this airline. We're going to upgrade you to first class. Well, mm -hmm. There are several challenges with that. Number one is it gets embedded in my expectations, so the next time I expect that same <laughs> thing. Second, yeah. it gets expensive because the airline needs to sell that seat in first class, you know, not use it as a perk, or sell that uh, that room on that concierge level. What I like to talk about is not value added, which is a generous approach, obviously, mm -hmm. but sure. value unique. Value unique is taking what the is 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 going somewhere the customer never expected, mm -hmm. uh, respond in a way that's not gen just generous, but in ingenious. It's different. It's unique. It's innovative. It surprises them because it's not what they thought. And I'll give you a quick example. Yes, my wife, uh, my wife took her car in, um, to, uh, bought a new car, and she traded in her old car and got a new car. Well, a week after she had her new car, she turned on the radio for the first time and discovered they had programmed in her radio stations from her trade-in. Oh, okay. Excellent. What do you think she talks about? The car or the radio? Oh, she talks about the yeah, the radio and how they went above and beyond, yeah, right? Absolutely. And Lord, I think what she paid for that car. But <laughs> what I'm saying is it's that kind of little thing. It's adding the little surprise, the unique thing. And it's the kind of thing that works when it's simple, works when it's unexpected, and works when it fits, when it's appropriate. Yeah, so that's know, what the book's about. So the, it's an interesting point, because, uh, a couple of interesting points to unpack here. But starting back with what you said about, you know, the upgrade in the hotel or the airline. Yeah, you're right, because next time you go and you don't get the upgrade, you're disappointed. So you're not even anymore. You're actually unhappy. Right? That's right. So that's it's had right. the opposite that's effect. Second time around, it has the opposite effect, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And so you quickly run out of room. <laughs> but the other side to it, uh, John, that I think is fun is the fact that um, when you invite uh, people to do more, they kind of go, well, I'm already doing all, all I can do, mm -hmm. you know. But when you say, we want you to do something different, do something unique, do something unexpected, now you're adding, you know, you're not just a worker bee, you're a firefly, and uh, so to speak. And now you're looking forward to, what can I do different today? What can we do to, you know, it's sort of like Cracker Jacks, you know. Right. We love <laughs> Cracker Jacks, not, not because it was great caramelized popcorn, but it was that prize, and, yeah. and you knew it was a surprise, but you never knew what it was going to be. So how do you create that free prize inside kind of concept in the experiences you deliver to your customers? Yeah, and the example that you used there about the, the setting the radio stations in your wife's car, I mean, the, the fantastic thing about that is it doesn't cost anything, right? No, 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 it doesn't. It doesn't. It takes just a little extra effort, you know, and, it's, and, and again, it makes a huge difference in terms of what the customer expects. I, I, I'll give you a funny one. I had one that happened last week. I, I, uh, I'm on a board of a civic group, and uh, we take turns. We meet once a month. We take turns providing refreshments, for you know, like coffee and donuts, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Well, my grocery store sells these banana nut uh, muffins that are they're really good. Well, I went by to get a dozen for the board meeting, and they were out of them. Okay. And so, but somebody said, you know, you need to try this bakery down the street. They're great. And I'd never been in there, so I go in. She said, Oh, yeah, we've got banana nut. How many would you like? I said, well, i like a dozen. And so she's ringing it up. She said, now, which one of these glorious – now, these think about this. Now. <laughs> she said, which one of these glorious muffins will be yours? Huh. I said, you know, I have no idea. <laughs> she said, what's your favorite color? And I said, uh, purple. 
She reaches in her drawer, got a purple, one of those little candles that, that you have on a birthday cake, mm-hmm. put it right in the middle of it. She said, that one will be yours. I said, you <laughs> think it was my birthday? She said, oh, no, that'd be weird if I knew your birthday. <laughs> but she said, we can trip, pretend it is. Mm. So it's sort of like I took, took away from that. What what would it be like if you treated every customer like today was their birthday? You know, well, that's mm. what she did for me. You know, so here was it cost her one little cheap mm. little candle a purple candle that she put in the middle of one of those. Candles. But I, I bet you I've told a thousand people, you know, right. because it's those little things and they make, they make the experience something you want to talk about. And yeah. one of the most important parts about loyalty is it's not about recommending, mm-hmm. you know, everybody says, would you recommend to a friend or a family member? I think the pinnacle of loyalty is, would you tell a story about it? Yeah, you know exactly. That's what makes a difference. You ain't gonna believe what happened to me. That's yeah. what. That's that's the deepest sense of advocacy is when they tell stories, and those little unique things get people telling stories. Yeah, and I think that, and I think the other part of it too is that I think unfortunately a lot of people like go around predispose predispose. Yeah, I can't even say the word, but predisposed. There you go. Yeah, predisposed right, go. to getting upset about things, right? And they're expecting right. things to upset them. So it's these little surprising touches can have such an outsized impact because they really go against the expectation. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, and they make people want to go back, and they and they can't wait to tell their friends about it. And so, and again, I think there's there is a limit to generosity, mm-hmm. but there's no limit to ingenuity. I mean, we can always keep coming up with unique and unusual. What if we did it like this? What if we tried it like this? And I think that spirit of inventiveness that you infuse in your culture changes their whole approach and the way they think about the customer. And so when I work with organizations, it's all about how do you create a culture that people look forward to wanting to do that? Right. And so, and that's a very different culture than give them more, give them more, give them more. I'm giving them all I can now. You know, I can't give them, keep giving them more. So, but I try something different. You know, what if you did it like this? What if we put a popcorn machine right over there? You know, yeah. you know, what if you had a flower? What would that look like? You know, what if we brought in something to smell good? You know, this, that, you know. It's, yeah. But it's, but what's nice about it again is what you're talking about is really empowering people to do things. And as we said, all of these things that you can do that are really clever, that actually don't cost money. They just cost a little bit of ingenuity like yeah, you said yeah exactly so exactly. when you, so in your book you talk about enchantment you know adding a little sparkle yeah. what, what, what's a, a grace honoring your customer what does that oh, mean oh that's my favorite one that's my favorite one you know i, I think today we don't have much of that mm-hmm. uh too little of it i think because grace is is has obviously a double meaning you know in a in a spiritual sense it's meant it's sort of unmerited uh it's that kind of acceptance that's right. unmerited. Uh, it, but we also think of it in an artistic sense. We talk about, you know, somebody being a ballet dancer or a diver or whatever, mm-hmm. being graceful. Mm-hmm. So it's adding that little th- sense of, I think, bringing a sense of character to what you do, a sense of, uh, of obvious integrity to what you do. Um, and so I think that's, that, that's something that, uh, and, 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 and oftentimes with it, it is, a caring deeply. I, I'll get one. One of my favorite examples is there is a pizza shop in. Um, you will love this. There's a pizza shop in Philadelphia, Roses uh, Pizza, and Roses Pizza is right smack dab in the middle. I was there two weeks ago. Roses Pizza is right smack in the dab of the busy section, business section of Philadelphia, but it also has a lot of homeless people down there. Right. Mm-hmm, so sure. this guy was a, a Wall Street broker, you know, uh, somebody on Wall Street. He just said, I was tired of the greasy, greedy world of Wall Street, and he moved to Philadelphia, and he opened a pizza shop. And the principle behind this pizza shop is you pay it forward. You can go in, you get a slice of pizza, but if you want to pay for a slice of pizza in advance, he gives you a Post-it note, and you can write a note to that says this pizza is for you or whatever you want to write mm-hmm. on it and post it on the board. And, uh, and any homeless person can come in and get that post-it note off the board and get a free, get the piece of pizza you bought, bought for them. Mm-hmm. Well, if you Google Rose, Rose's pizza in Philadelphia, mm-hmm. you'll see there are thousands, thousands of post-it notes on his wall. And he said, what I love about it, and this is the graceful side. And what mm-hmm. I love about it is it's a place people come in, a quick, quick slice of pizza or two at lunch. 
and they stand up, you know, eat it. It's like right. counters where you can stand. To see a business person standing there in a suit next to a homeless person eating pizza is kind of what the world ought to be about. Yeah. You know? yeah. And so it's it's thinking through those kind of lens that I think is enriches in, in, in service experiences, but it also in so doing enriches the lives of the people who give. It's like Porsche's speech from the Merchant of Venice. It blesses him who gives and him who receives the quality of mercy. So yeah. uh, it, it's that size. Yeah. yeah. And again, I mean, what a, what a fantastic example. But again, it is, yeah, I mean, how much is a pizza slice? I don't know. What, a, a couple dollar, of bucks. Let's dollar, say, a dollar? Right? So yeah. for a dollar, you're actually giving somebody the opportunity to stop and think for a moment about helping somebody else and oh. you're allowing that other person to think oh yeah you know the world hasn't forgotten about me so yeah. you can't put a price on that can you no 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 and there's tons of thank you notes that mm -hmm. homeless people have come in and written thank you notes and put those up there too that's that's a different color and so you can spot them but just sometime when you when you go go online and look at roses yeah no, i wrote it down here yeah. well look at look at the images from google images and you'll see there's thousands of post-it notes are on that wall for people. And I just think it's just a great example of, you know, it's service full of grace, you know, mm -hmm. in, in its purest sense. So, yeah, because one of, the, cause one of the things that strikes me a lot is, I mean, you see companies coming up with a lot of gimmicks, right? You know, yeah. there's gimmicks and they feel very hollow and empty. And it feels like a lot of people were sitting around going, oh, this would be cool. Yeah. Instead of what you're saying is, you know, something where it's, um, this could really matter to someone. This could really yeah. touch someone. This could actually, you know, spread something more than just just the product or service. Exactly. You know, when you look at read about Fortune magazine every year, they do the hundred best companies to work for. Mm -hmm. But what do you? One of the features characteristic, and I always like to read the stories behind the companies that are chosen every year and the, the ones people love to work for. But what you notice characteristic in in many many of the descriptions of these companies is. Their enormous give back orientation, mm -hmm. enormous community service they they promote. Um, so, like you say, it's not just coming up with some cool gimmick. It's saying, what can we do? What can we do to be an, an organization that that thinks larger than our role and place mm -hmm. in our community and and our whole give back orientation? I I think that's kind of spirit is what Kaleidoscope. Where I got the word con concept of Kaleidoscope, and you'll you'll appreciate this is. I have granddaughters, and they love kaleidoscopes. Yeah. I've got a bunch of them. I like to collect them. And they're all coming. They look at them, and they mm. squeal, look and all of them. But I reminded them one day when they were here, you know, the images continually change, mm -hmm. but the stones, the jewels that are inside ne never change. Right. You know, it's the same jewels. And so kaleidoscope is about well, what are those jewels that may be expressed uniquely when you turn that animator mm -hmm. or when you – live your life or serve others that may express in different ways, like a kaleidoscope, but the core is always the same. And so the book Kaleidoscope's about what are those core things that need to be that cause people to want to tell a story. And so mm -hmm. that's what it's organized around. Yeah, so. and, and that's a and that's a great concept. And another great thing about the kaleidoscope, let's face it, I mean how old are kaleidoscopes? Oh, many, many, many years. They go yeah, back, right? Uh, yeah, and hundreds there are, of years. And yeah. there is, and it's a simple concept with, as it you is. say, with endless connotations. Um, do you know, there's another one I noticed here, and I and and this is one that I love. It really jumped out for me was uh, nurture total candor, right? Because, yeah, because yeah, yeah. one. Let, let me just preface this because I think when you talk to most people, you say, uh, or when you, you know, people say like, "Oh yes, I love people to be candid. I want you to be candid with me, and they want you to be candid with you with them, until you're candid with them." <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. I like that. Yeah. I, well, I think I think uh, what's behind it is, is not the candor, but the way in which you obviously deliver the candor, mm -hmm. you know, w w what, what is it grounded in? What do you, where, what space are you coming from when you deliver that candor? It, you know, it's, is it candor with compassion or is it just candor to criticize? Mm -hmm. Um, and so I think part of that whole concept that I talk about and I work with organizations around is yeah, yeah you won't candor cause pe you want people to tell the truth, honesty, it will set you free, mm -hmm. uh, but 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 you want to deliver it in a way that reflects a sense of compassion, a sense of caring. Because at the end of the day, no matter how candid you are, if they can't hear it, yeah, what good is it? 
And so how do I deliver that candor in a way it can be heard? And it's only heard if it's coming from a space from that person who's delivering it, that they know that it comes from a space of caring and love and compassion. And uh, that, that I think, so it's learning to, to come from there and how, mm-hmm. and so the person knows they're being honest with me, but they, but they have my best interest uh, in mind when mm-hmm. they deliver that candor. Yeah. So it's a, important thing i think no and uh, abso- absolutely and another thing i see there the let it go what's that about the mercy and let it go oh yeah let it go well i, I think you know uh, one of my favorite quotes and i think i put it in the book i can't remember i'm working on the next one but <laughs> it, it says you know um something about um uh, how how powerful it is when you accept the apology that was never given uh. And and so I think part of that is all about not carrying around a lot of heavy baggage, not carrying around a lot of um, a grudge, um, but just let it go and move on. You know, mm-hmm. forgive and move on. And maybe you not want. Maybe it'll be a while before you can forget about it. But I think people carry, particularly today. I mean, we are living in such a polarized, oh, yeah. highly politically charged. You know. And d- divisiveness, and, and I think so, you know we want to we want to be quick to blame, and we instead we need to be quick to accept uh, that another hum- it's another human being that I mm-hmm. that I value that human being, and so and and not and and not necessarily judge. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know that's I think that's and I, I, and I and I think that's a I think that's a hugely important point, and I and I think that people carry not just you know carry a huge amount of baggage in their lives, yeah, but they carry it into their work because they you know you can't suddenly most people aren't able to check it in, check it at the door no. when they they yeah. carry it into their into their right. work and i and I agree hugely with you, I think it's one of the hardest people hardest things for people to accept is right. what you say is to forgive somebody when they're when they've never or they're never going to apologize to you right. Right, right. Yeah. And just accept the apology you never got, you know, mm-hmm. and, then, and then say it frees you and move on. And that's why the concept of just let it go. And again, what's behind it is sometimes we, we are quick to judge and we don't know mm-hmm. where that other person may be yes, coming sir. from. They may be have done some things that hurt us. And, you know, we want to, uh, you know, find I, I, I still remember there was a great story about uh how this uh, individual and, and, and had a childhood that was awful, and he went into an uh, Amish church and he killed all these people. Mm-hmm. And uh, you may remember it. It was it was sure. uh, it, and and how many how the Amish people all came to his funeral, mm-hmm. and and you know how powerful that was. Right. That there were more people uh, from the Amish community who had been the victims at his funeral than there were people from his family. And so mm. I, I, that's, it's hard to do. That's hard to do, obviously, but that's the kind of, um, that's the higher self that I mm-hmm. think we need. You know, the, the whole concept of service is about to serve. It's about to give. It's about, and, and so again, kaleidoscopes about those core higher level values that need to undergird uh, what we do and how we deliver the, experiences that we deliver to other people so and finally as we're bumping up against the end just passion be all there what's um, yeah yeah be all there when when you're there be all there you know (laughs) bring bring all that you have you know i I, you know teddy roosevelt had all his faults and i you know i've been reading some stuff uh doris kearns goodwin's got the new book out i know Mm -hmm. um about the history of some of the presidents she's written obviously the revival of team of rivals that Mm -hmm. she wrote about lincoln uh, well, she's got a new book out, and um, it's it's a it, but uh, Teddy Roosevelt is a guy who had flaws. Um, he had, unfortunately, his very pro- bigoted and 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 prejudiced against mm-hmm. Native Americans at that particular time. So he wasn't a perfect person, but he had a style about him that people loved. Um, mm-hmm. He was fun to work for. People said he was really fun to work with, and I remember the fun quote is. He's the kind of guy that wanted to be the host at every party, the bride at every uh, wedding, <laughs> and the corpse at every funeral. But, but it was it, it means he he was passionate. He was energized. He was uh, you know it was the, I love the word passion because it's really three. It's pass I own. You know mm-hmm. it's the bringing the best of who you are to every situation and mm-hmm. be all theirs is just that. When you're there, be all there, right? And not just half there. And and uh, I think. 
the passion is that energy and enthusiasm for life. It's contagious and it, 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 it brings a boldness that can make things happen. You yeah. know, we've got too much plain vanilla in my, in my view. Yeah. And to be honest, I think, uh, you know, people have lost, are losing the ability to be all there because yeah. they're yeah. like a little bit there and then they're a little yeah, bit on their exactly. phone and they're a little bit on their social media and they're a little bit right. everywhere. So I think that's a great reminder is like, if you're going to be, if you're going to go in, go all in, right? Go all in. Absolutely. In <laughs> so, everything you do, in everything you do. Yeah, excellent. This has been a great, uh, really enjoyed the conversation. Well, thank you, John. Too. I'm honored to be with you. Yeah. So uh, just before you go, how can people learn more about you? Oh, they uh, probably the easiest way is my website. It's chipbell.com. It's a website name I can remember. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and all contact information is there. I'm one of these crazy people that puts my address and phone number and all that sort of stuff at the in the contact pages. I don't make people fill out a form to reach right. me. Um, so yeah, anything, just go to chipbell.com, all the information about books I've done, anything they want to know is there. And I, I'd welcome that. I'd Perfect. welcome that. Perfect. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. It's been a pleasure talking with you, Chip, and I'll see you all again soon.